Oh, hello there. Good evening. How's everyone doing tonight? I hope you're all doing well. Um, I can actually see... I can actually see, um, your comments tonight. That's pretty exciting. Unusual. Wonder what fixed it. Hmm. Well, hopefully it'll stay this way, because, uh... <clears throat> I would have brought my glasses. I thought that I wasn't. I'm having a little bit of coffee. I was uh, fading. And I really want to stay up late tonight. Last night, oh my god, last night this fog descended on the city. It was like, <clears throat> it was unbelievable. Like, it was like, this thick, it was like the movie, The Fog. With real monsters inside the fog. Um, no, it was just, it was beautiful, so, um, I was really excited, uh, and I was so tired that I just went to sleep, because I spent the whole day at my parents' house. Uh, let's see here, um, Kim Bayard, thank you, honey. Always nice to see Kim here. By the way, if you're not on Patreon, what are you doing? Patreon.com slash this is Dan Bell. And also, you can buy a print, a beautiful print. Just go read the reviews on my website. This is DanBell.com. There's a huge selection of prints. And people are hanging them up on their walls and giving them away as gifts and um, it's been keeping me really busy, but, uh, I'm really, really pleased with, uh, with, uh, the love and compassion that everyone has shown my website. Um, and there'll be new pictures up, uh, in the next few days for February. So every month I put up, like, ten new photos. Uh, and this month in February... <clears throat> I'm going to be traveling to go shoot some new malls. So I'm really excited about that. Sony FX30? I don't know what that camera is. The FX30. Do you mean the FX3? <clears throat> I don't know how many how many cameras are in the FX line. Oh shit. You can go around me, dude. I mean, you're honking at me. Okay. We'll just go then. What a couple of days. If I can just have like one week where there's no stress, that would be fantastic. It would be wonderful. Um, but it has yet to transpire. <laughs> I'm constantly stressed about something. Uh, oh, Alina O'Connor, hey, um, She's Pinot Noir drunk. I love you too, Alina. Have fun with your Pinot Noir. I like jumped. I like, I was like working on something. And it was 8.39. I looked at the clock. I said, okay. Uh, we have a live stream in an hour and 20 minutes. Want to shower and walk wee wee. Excuse me. So I kept typing and working on this thing. And then I looked at the screen and I'm like, oh my God, it's nine. No, it was, yeah, it was 920. So I had 40 minutes to shower, take wee wee out, put my stuff together, 
and get out of the house, and I was still late. <clears throat> you have to excuse me, I have a little bit of a, some remnants from COVID, this cough, which I'm going to the doctors next week so they can uh, assess it. But, oh crap, how do I fix this? My windows are all falling down. <clears throat> but there's like nothing worse than coughing on a live stream. Just FYI. But it like comes and goes. Sometimes I have it and sometimes I don't have it, so we'll see. But I'm hoping. Uh, it's just... Well, the last time I had COVID, I had a cough for, like, a month after the COVID. So, my mother still has a cough, and she was sick at, uh, during Christmas. Christmas week of COVID, so she's still coughing. So hopefully everyone will feel better. Anyway, tonight... I thought we would go around and go check out some alleyways. Uh, holy shit, is that? Oh, it's a cat. Okay. I thought we would check out some alleyways and show you guys around uh, to see what we may find hidden away we got here. You see, my, my, um, uh, I'll tell you this, my, my favorite kind of, <clears throat> my favorite kind of abandoned house is when they have curtains up, when they have the curtains still up, then you know that you're gonna see, like, there's gonna be furniture and maybe pictures and all kinds of stuff in there. Um, so I'm always, like, when I see one with curtains, I'm always like, ooh, that would be good. Is this Pennsylvania Avenue? Yes, it is. How the hell do we end up here? I'm gonna keep going straight. This Santa Maria's place, I don't know if it's a bar or a club or a liquor store maybe, or maybe it's a restaurant. I don't know. Oh, who do we have here? Um, hey, Jen, snacks and gas for the Friday drive. Thank you, honey. I really appreciate that. But anyway, so, yeah, so I'm going to the doctor next week, and the week after, I have a sleep study for sleep apnea, which I'm pretty sure I have sleep apnea. Um, I was once diagnosed with mild sleep apnea, but now I think I have full-fledged sleep apnea. Well, not mild, it was like, it only happened like when I first fell asleep and then it didn't happen again. So it would happen like the first 10 to 20 minutes of my sleep, it, I would have apnea and then I wouldn't have it anymore. And then they said, well, you know, I, th I, I think I was told I didn't need a CPAP. Now I'm pretty sure I need one. Cause like, I'm just tired all the time and depressed and fatigued. I'm, I'm almost, and my sister who's a nurse heard me sleeping the other day and my sister's like, you have sleep apnea. You need to go immediately. And I said, yeah. So I called, but, um, hopefully it'll get me back in the swing of things. Um, cause it seems like the only time I'm at, like, it seems like the only time I'm awake 
is during the evening hours. When I'm in the evening, um, I am awake and have energy and everything. <clears throat> but the morning, oh my god, I'm I'm dragging. I mean, I could wake up at nine and not get out of bed until two. Like I just lay there and. Uh, I really want, I, it used to be, I'd wake up in the morning and be like, yay, let's do you, you know, and now it's, uh, different, but my, um, my friend, um, he's skinny, like, real skinny, he's like a, he's like a beanpole, and, um, oh, let me move for you, you can park here, and, he just found out that he has sleep apnea, and he's thin. I thought only fat people had it, but apparently uh, thin people can have it, too. But he was, like, really kind of suffering for years with being tired, and they could never figure out what was wrong. And then finally a doctor said, oh, you need to go and get a, uh, do a sleep study for apnea. And he did, and lo and behold, he has sleep apnea. Justin had it untreated for 10 years, so that's not good. Ten years was brutal. Never had sleep. <clears throat> See, I sleep, but I feel like I'm not getting a good enough sleep. And then the dry mouth and everything. Like, I had to... Why did I come down this alleyway? Because I was looking at this, but it's all... It's... This is all... Cinder block. And this church here, I don't think... I don't think there's anybody manning this church. I think it's abandoned. Jesus Christ. All this glass, man. Um, but enough about me and my medical problems. <laughs> the whole goal is to get this every like the fatigue all that kind of stuff under control so i can go back and start exercising again i want to exercise and lose weight i'm so tired of being fat and I'm, i haven't been this fat ever in my life and um that's one of the the symptoms of sleep apnea is is uh you know eating a lot because uh, you're just constantly trying to get energy uh, so I'm hoping that I'm pretty sure it's sleeping. Oh, I did. You know what I did? There's an app. There is an app <clears throat> that you put on your phone and you sleep with the app on and it'll tell you. And the app said I had, I had, I needed to contact the doctor about sleep apnea. So it, obviously, but it, playing it back was fucking scary. <laughs> Oh my god, it was like me gasping for breath in my sleep. I mean, that is like fucking scary. That's scary. I mean, I know there's some people out there who wish I would not catch my breath and just die, but unfortunately, I'd like to live a little bit longer. <laughs> there's a lot of people who will rejoice when I'm dead. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta have some more coffee, and I'm reading these comments. Hey, Arizona Alchemy. Alina, hey. Alina O'Connor's here.
Hey, Manny Ice. Lena's drinking that wine. Hey, Heather Ray. More coffee on you. I appreciate it. Uh, Matthew, yeah, the screen is working fine tonight. Oh, it's getting foggy again. There's a fog warning tonight, so I hope it gets, like, real foggy. So when we drive down alleyways, it looks like a fucking horror movie. Mm. This is Nespresso. <clears throat> I have one of those little Nespresso machines. And, uh... Yeah, we can we can go to Lincoln Park too. <clears throat> that fog last night though was incredible. I mean, I couldn't, I could barely see the building across the street from where I live. I couldn't see it. It was the fog was just unbelievable. Today really sucked, man. I, I just like this morning. I was supposed to interview on. NPR, or I was, what was I doing? Uh, I was, I was gonna, they were gonna do a, um, a recording of me or something. I forget what they were. I don't remember. Anyway, I didn't feel like doing it, so I canceled it. <laughs> Cause I just, I'm like, what is the point? Um, like I'm just, I did a, a huge interview with NPR back, like, six or six years ago and they never played it so it's like well why am I going to do another one but I truly woke up this morning I said I cannot do this like I just can't I could not pull myself together um and it's on camera and I just I was like I can't do this right now I can't do it I can't talk now, now I know when I go I have to be like Hi, uh, yes, this is Dan Bell. Um, yeah, there's plenty of balls on the way. You know, this is a phenomenon that's happening all over the world. And I really... you, you got to do that national public radio voice. <laughs> yeah. Nothing... Oh, did you make a, a funny? Haha. Uh -huh. Well... I was too, that, that's what it was. We went, we, we, I went down to NPR in DC and I was going to be on their morning show, which is, you know, that's a big deal because I mean, a lot of people listen to that and, uh, uh, I was too animated <laughs> in the interview. I was like animated. I was like, Oh, who are you? you know, the woman's like talking, she's very serious and did I bring up that she used to be a store mannequin? I can't remember if I did or not. I think that I did. I think that I brought that up and it probably pissed her off. Because I found out that she, before getting into broadcasting, uh, she used to be a store mannequin. So she she was like a live mannequin in, in a department store. And, um... No, not like the movie Mannequin. She, <laughs> she's not from Edfu, Egypt. A long, a really long, long, long time ago. Um, no, she, she, I think I brought it up or something, and she looked like she was not having it. And unfortunately, it wasn't live. I don't think they do many interviews live. I, I think they pre-record everything, so it kind of fits into their. It fits into their uh, the way they do everything. Is this where the warehouse is? Yeah, it is. Oh, and the fog is starting to come. Oh, this is so exciting. I'm getting excited. The fog is here. I love when it... I love fog. Ah. Uh, 
Um, here, let me show you something. Here, th that's the warehouse. Uh, Dylan and I, um, shot this. Hey, Destiny, what's up? But look at that. What is this? Jan, does anyone know why Dan goes... What did she say? I go and talk to down to women on Instagram. What is... She, these people, I swear to God, are out of their minds. I, I don't do that. I, bear, I rarely comment on Instagram at all. Does she have any examples? Jan, do you have any examples? God damn, people are crazy. <clears throat> I talk down to women on Instagram. I don't, I don't, I don't even know what that means. I love women. What is she talking about? Is anyone aware? Like she has to make everyone aware of something that. Where's the? Pr I don't even. I mean, what is she talking about? When do I talk down to women on Instagram? I've never done that. Instagram is one place that I'm very um, behaved on. So I don't I don't do stuff like that on. I I don't talk down to random women on Instagram. But she, you know what? She probably. Um, She probably came on and said some stupid shit because she's obviously obsessed. These people who are like, like she she had to come here tonight and waste her time writing a stupid fucking comment. I can't stand these people. I don't know why. It, it's very strange, but I do not know why. Uh, these psychophantic weirdos spend all of their time thinking about me and and like just lying to, to make me look bad. I, I just don't get it. I, I really don't. I guess it's just part of being like I don't know. Like a Z-list celebrity. I don't know. I'm so tired of it though, man. But Jan really wanted to get the conversation started about how I talk down to women on Instagram. I don't even know what the fuck to do. <laughs> Where do they come up with this shit? Jesus Christ. That was 3D. That was like a 3D moment. I wanted you all to make sure. I wanted to make sure everyone was awake. <laughs> Oh, oh, let's see here. Lambo guy. Hey, Dan. I've got an urbex series called Abandoned Nevada. I think you'd really like it. Uh, Lambo guy, send me a link. Um, just email me a link. I'd love to go check it out. See what you do. Now, if you now Lambo guy, if you're a woman, I'm gonna talk down to you. Um. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> degrade you as a woman if you are a female. <laughs> what do you think, Jan? Like, of course, her name is Jan. Hi, I'm Jan. I'm Jan Bell. Hi, I'm Jan Bell. I need to get this conversation started about Dan Bell. Dan Bell by Jan Bell. 
with no examples. I, I just wish, I honestly wish we hadn't blocked her so I could get some examples, but, well, whatever. Jen got rid of her. Apocalypse Jen. Hey, Jen, I hope you're feeling better. I really feel bad what, you, what you've been going through. It kind of sucks. Um... I know the fog is going to get, but it's going to get thicker too, I think. Well, I mean, look, if Jan, look, look, th this is another thing. Um, a lot of these people don't understand uh, like, sarcasm. And it's possible, I get, I don't recall ever making a comment, a nasty comment to a woman on Instagram. I, I just don't, I, I, I beg anyone to go and search and find me making nasty comments. I would never do that. Um, But also, uh, you know, I have friends on Instagram who I'm very sarcastic with, and we'll, you know, we'll say things back and forth that are awful, and then people look at that and they take, they think it's real, and it's not. But regardless, I don't care. Paint me. They, these people are just, they just do everything they can to paint me as some uh, psychotic, bitter, you know, insane person, and it's like just so. It's like, get a life. But I'll tell you, I will tell you, here is the, the, um, this is the timeline of where these people come from. The timeline begins. They find my videos. They fall in love with the videos. Most of these people get upset. <clears throat> oh, I gotta show you this. We'll, 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 we'll stop here. Um, what's that? Oh, hey, Neil. What's up, Neil? Damn, <laughs> pal exposed, yeah. Um, Thank you, Neil. The timeline. They find my videos. They really like them. And then I, I don't know if it's because a lot of people... I don't know if it's because the maybe the Dead Mall series or the Quiet Times or something. Like, they take people to... It may calm them down. It may help them sleep. It may you know, help them with anxiety or something. Maybe that's it. So they kind of form this really personal bond with me. And I don't, it, it's, it's very parasocial because it's very one-sided. I don't know these people. I don't talk to them. Um, maybe I'll comment back one day or something, but, uh, generally speaking, I, you know, I don't know any of these people. And, um, so they will try to contact me over and over and over again. And there is no end to it, which is why I've stopped really getting into in-depth conversations because I don't, I just don't have the time. It's nothing personal. It's just, there's no bottom. Like if I, the, if I say something in depth, They'll come back, say something, then I come back, then they come back, and then they come back again and come back again. So, I just, uh, I just, you know, don't really engage in that kind of conversation. Um, and, uh, so they become angry. Um, they become angry and they become ex-fans and they will spend all day 
talking shit about me on YouTube or whatever social media platform they can get to. And then they look for kindred spirits, which, you know, there are a couple of channels where these people go and hang out and um, just talk shit about me. And uh, it, it's, you know, it, it really started and was perpetuated by uh, just one or two individuals. Um, but they become ex-fans. They hear, you know, they hear what, they see what other people are writing who are also the same, it's the same thing. It's somehow I've changed. Um, I'm no longer, the, you know, I. It, it, it's either I'm not humble anymore or I've changed or I'm, you know, bitter or angry. And it's unfortunate that I've had uh, a, a couple of public breakups with people who I used to work with. Um, that didn't do me any good because no matter what, no matter what, I am always the villain. I will always be the villain. Um, you know, I, I usually, especially with Dirty Room, wanted to choose people who are relatable. Not like somebody in a lab coat going, oh, yes, well, this is, you know, I wanted relatable people on the show. Um, and uh, when these people are relatable, people really take to them. And um, it, you know, it ends up, uh, oh, shit, that's what's going on. Shit, my phone is, like, boiling. My phone is, like, boiling hot. I'm sorry. Um, oh god, I can't see. Uh, Pr Prince? Price? Price man? The stream looks great with the fog. Tonight. Price man, thank you so much. I agree. We'll get more fog in a minute. Just, um, let me just finish this. So, um, relatable people who are in a project that I made, things didn't work out as in a, in a, in a creative environment that happens. Um, you know, it's just when you're in a creative environment, um, especially when it, you're working on something that's successful, ego comes in and, you know, there's always somebody who's here and somebody who's here and somebody who's here and if you can't accept your role or you think you deserve more that's poison that's going to destroy everything and um but i digress don't take everything you read online seriously you know i have an email address it's this is danbell.com or this is Dan Bell or um this is Dan Bell at gmail.com or you can this is Dan Bell or Dan at this is Dan Bell.com. Um you can just ask me personally, is this true? And I'll tell you whether or not it's true. There's some things that are true and some things that most things that are not true. But it really burns my ass sometimes because it's, it's just been taken to a, a, a point where it's just so unnecessary and it's the same people doing it over and over and over again and it's like when are you going to accept and get a life and move the fuck on and like make something of your make something of yourself instead of you know, investing all your time in negativity and trying to suss me out. It's just stupid. It's dumb. And you're not going to do anything anyway. These people, they're like, he doesn't deserve any subscribers. Well, I've got subscribers. I've got people here. I'm not, I'm not begging people to be here. Um... 
you know, I'm not, I'm not, like, all I'm trying to do is make, I'm trying to entertain, I'm making entertaining content for people to watch, that's all I care about, and in 2024, because I I will, I, the last couple years have been very, very difficult, um, and I really just got so sick and tired of You hear that? Why is my phone so hot? It's like boiling hot. I'm gonna plug it in. Okay, that's off. This is off. All right, Um, let's see here. Who we got? Um, Hey, Bill Platt, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Old fan checking in, Dan, love you. Stop defending yourself. Love you. No. Who the, who the best version of Dan is. Uh, love you and always a supporter. Bill, thank you. You've been here a long time. Um, I, I, listen, I haven't... This idea that I somehow changed. Um, I've been the same person since, literally, since I was, like, probably a real young and I've always been a sarcastic person um, and a passionate person and someone who really enjoys making videos and uh, it's, it's inevitable. I mean, that's the whole thing with this business. It's inevitable because you've got people who are... Um, on the, on, they're unhinged. I mean, that's, you know, they're unhinged and they can't, they can, they have nothing, uh, happening in their life. So they just hyper focus on one fucking thing. And it's like, it's just so fucking crazy, man. I feel bad. I feel sorry for them. Like, I can't imagine, like, spending every day worried about some person I don't even know or or met. It's crazy. But, whatever. What are you gonna do? Um, Alina again. Hope we were... Hope we see you and Brian together soon. Yeah, you will. Um... Uh, uh, Br- Brennan and I, um, Br- uh, Brennan and I have been in talks, uh, we've been talking a lot lately, just cause some drama was stirred up and then I get really pissed off cause I don't want his name I don't want his name involved in drama because he doesn't deserve that at all. Um, but it doesn't matter, because these people are, they're animals. They're like pigs. And they can't stop. Um, so, yeah. But, yeah, I love Brandon. Brandon, to me, I mean, I'm, and I've said this before, he's like family to me. He's like, he's like my little brother I never had, so, um... I'm a little protective over him, honestly, and, uh, and Brennan does really good work, and he is a hard worker, and he's got good ideas, but I, his videos, he, he's really grown, you know, so that's something that, um, I find very commendable about him, um, 
And he took, you know, he took a, a, an opportunity where he was on Dirty Room. He took that opportunity and turned it into, you know, a successful channel with over 100,000 subscribers. So I couldn't be happier for him. Um, but yes, we are going to be working on something together. Very soon. Um, it's a uh, creeps and monsters, but it's not anything you've heard of. It's actually this is actually a cold case here in Baltimore, and the guy who they were looking for was a real creep. So he's he's a creep. Creep and monsters could be anybody. It could be a person. It could be a ghost. It could be. Uh, anything. But anyway, um, I thank you all for being here tonight. We're going to... Oh, okay, there's the peanut factory. Now I know where we are. Um, the fog is making it a little confusing. Uh, I want you know, thank you all for being here tonight. I appreciate it. Um, like I said, I'll, pro I'll probably be doing some more of these. I may do one tomorrow night, but I, I, I'm not sure yet. Um... You guys are the greatest. I mean, seriously. I'm, 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 I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't have the support uh, that I do have, which is just great people and normal people. You're all normal people. You know? Usually, like, I've watched channels on YouTube, and I'm like, I'm like, oh, this guy is really cool. And then I'll watch for a while, and then... Slowly, I'm like, eh, this isn't really doing it for me anymore. And I just stop watching for a while. I don't start writing this guy's an asshole on <laughs> comment, write it and stuff. I mean, it's just crazy. But um, the crazy people who are here, and you know who you are, because um, they're always here. They, the people who are like, I'll never watch him again, and they're always here watching um they're obsessed so they have nothing better to do and they just sit and watch me all the time but y'all can suck my fucking dick okay because i don't give a fuck about you i'm the one going to the bank with the checks you're not going to any bank you're fucking licking food stamps uh so don't worry about me you should worry about getting yourself up and you know elevate yourself and make something of yourself but until then, you can suck some of the man snot out of my cock, you fucking cocksuckers. <sighs> oh, sorry to have to say that, but uh, a little bit of foul language here tonight for everyone. Don't really care. Love the foul language. <laughs> But, yeah, and they know who they are. They're watching right now. And they're sitting there getting all steamed and crazy and ready to punch a wall. And it's like, you're sitting there obsessing over a stranger. You do, I don't know you. Let me just put it out there. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. We've never met. I don't know you. Maybe I commented on something one time, re responded to one of your comments. Other than that, I don't know you. I just don't know you. I mean, either, you know, there's people online you find irritating. I mean, of course there's people online I find irritating. But they're, like, the worst of the worst people. I don't, like, personally, I don't see, I mean, may, well, who knows? I am, I mean, I know I irritate some friends and stuff. Find me extremely irritating, so maybe, I don't know. I just don't, I don't, I just, I, I want... 
a drama-free zone on my channels, and I want to be able just to make videos and and not not deal with these hideous people. I mean, they're just awful. Um, you know, but that. That Instagram thing, that's just a, tr that's a troll. It's not even real. It's somebody just coming on, because that's an easy uh, thing, because then, what are you going to do? Go, you can't search someone's fucking, uh, in Instagram posts. I mean, their, their comments, unless you follow the same person and you happen to look at one of their pictures, but I don't, I don't know what I said. Maybe it was one of her photos. And I told her what a... Jan Bell, I told her what an idiot she is. This is Jan Bell. So anyway. That's it for that. We're not talking about that anymore. I'm tired of it. It's really foggy now. Uh, let me turn this around. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go to this uh, motel over here, across the bridge. It's kind of really run down. Look at that! Look at that picture on there. Was I driving on the wrong side of the road? Oh God. And yeah, and thanks to the mods for keeping this uh, a, a place of a positivity and not negativity. Dan, I have been a patron for many years. All these, how oh, my eyes are just fucked. All these toxic people love your work, but constantly complain it isn't all free. They expect too much. I am sure they don't volunteer at their workplace <laughs> or their work. No, they don't. And TCB Garage, thank you so much, man. But yeah, the mods on here are great. And I'm just, I, I, I'm kind of like at a point where I just don't even want to address any more drama. Um, and just kind of move on from it. Uh, not even drama, but just haters and stuff. Like, I, I do have fun belittling and demeaning those people because they deserve it and they're pieces of shit. Um, and that is quite gratifying to do, especially to a large audience. Um, but it doesn't solve anything. It doesn't make anything better. It just makes makes it so there's more opportunities for someone to come to my building with a shotgun and blow my head off when I come out to walk wee wee um <laughs> oh my god what is wrong with me very dark thinking very dark thoughts um Hey, Donna Rafferty, thank you, honey. And, um, let's see. Uh, Jack. Thanks, Dan. Um, I'm a guy. I'm a guy, but you can talk down to me. You make me laugh. I'm eating peanut butter sandwich. Mm, my favorite. I love peanut butter. Jif. I like Jif. But Jif is like process and sugar in it and everything. Can never get a break. So anyway, we're gonna go up here, we're gonna go to a motel that sometimes some whacked out shit is going on outside. And then I'm gonna take you over to the uh, 
lumber, well, it's not really lumber. Good God, it is really foggy here. Holy hell. Look at this fog. This is it, it, it with the lights. It almost looks like we're in a forest fire. Like we're driving through a. It reminds me of like when I was in California and there was forest fires, and you had to drive through the smoke, and the fires would illuminate the the smoke, and it would be orange. That's kind of what this reminds me of. But this fog is hella thick, man. Jeez Christ. Oh my God. What are these people doing? There's no merge area. The roadway in. This was originally uh, Motel 6. And they, it's ridiculous because they call it... They used to call it the Motel 6... Camden Yards. I mean, Camden Yards is up the highway, but it's not anywhere. It's it's 10 minutes away, 10 or 15 minutes away. It's not like it's right next to the fucking Camden Yards, but they called it that, and even that, it didn't work. Nobody even wanted to come here then. There's, uh... But th this place is real, real seedy. Hey, Invisible, how are you doing? Had a bacon peanut butter burger from Sonic. Surprise, it was uh, gross as hell, I imagine, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't want uh, a burger and peanut butter. I just, I don't know why that's a thing. Um, people do, I guess, eat that. I just think it's disgusting. Wow, this fog, man, is crazy. So, um, the other place we're gonna go look at is, uh, it's a, it's basically, they make pallets. It's a pallet yard. Wooden pallets to, for delivering stuff. And there was a serial killer there who killed two women prostitutes. And he also, he also had a, he lived on the property and he also had a, uh, barbecue stand. And according to him, he, um, put human meat in the barbecue. It's so foggy. I can't even see like... barely see the rooms. There's not many people out tonight, though. This is what I never understood about this place. Um, the park, it doesn't go all the way through. Why is that? Why doesn't it just go all the way around? Wouldn't that make things easier? And then this building here was a restaurant and a nightclub um and i believe it was shut down by police because it was pretty there was a lot of riffraff and a lot of uh drugs and everything going on in that place um but that has been closed for i mean years it hasn't been open i i would wonder what the inside looks like. I believe, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think that that property is. Look, look at the look at the fog and the with the light. Doesn't it? It looks like a forest fire, doesn't it? 
Um, anyway, I, I believe, I think that this property is owned by the motel. That it's, it's all part of the same property. They usually have this, look at that tree, how creepy that looks. Now, if I saw an open door, if, you know what? I wouldn't even go in because it's going to, I don't have a mask and I guarantee you that place is going to be filled with mold. There's going to be mold. Everywhere. What the hell is this? Look at this. I just... They have like one side blocked off. Here we go. Uh, I cannot remember the name of that serial killer. But if you type in Baltimore serial killer, serial killer, uh, he's the first thing that pops up. And there's this grotesque, he was a grotesque looking man. He was very big uh, and took this horrible photo uh, where he's like snarling at the camera. And that's really, the, yeah, Joe Metheny, yes, that's the one. Joe Metheny, um, these two look a little tipsy. Okay, um, yes, Joe Metheny, uh, I remember when it all kind of happened, and his, his barbecue stand, um, Uh, Test Channel wants to know if I've been to the Echelon Mall of Orgies Town Center in New, New Jersey. I have, actually. Uh, it's been a minute. I haven't been there in a while, but I, I, I only went there once. Um, but I was being... I went there to be interviewed by the uh, New York Times, so... They were taking pictures of me and stuff inside the mall. I think there's uh, that picture of me standing on a stairwell looking like uh, I'm looking for a pot roast um, dinner. That is one of the pictures they took there that day. <laughs> yeah. So, you guys, uh, can you please uh, hit the like button? So I feel liked. I don't feel liked right now. And if you hit the like button, um, I will definitely feel more liked. But it is nice that 340 of you just did it on your own accord. That is a lovely thing. Wow, it is really foggy tonight. <laughs> Okay, so this is where, uh, boy, that, that car coming out of here is so creepy, because, like, why would they be back here? Everything's closed. Look at how creepy. This is straight out of a damn movie. Look at that. Look, if I turn the lights off, look. Oh my god, man. So, both of the women that he brought back here were both prostitutes. And he buried one, I believe, underneath his mobile home that was in the pallet yard. And then he buried the other lady victim uh, up on a hill that is surrounding the pallet yard. Um, go ahead and turn these back on. But you see, see all this, look at all the pallets, my goodness. 
Imagine, like, ramming into that. Alright, that... This little, like, pallet pathway is fucking creepy. <laughs> oh my god, look how creepy that is. Can you imagine if just somebody popped out right now? I would have, a, like, I would really, really freak out. But that is beautiful, looking at that. Truly gorgeous. Um... So this was his, um, oh, Invisible, hey, um, uh, the, uh, Minotaur, this is that thing, oh, <laughs> Minotaur, <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, um, yeah, I don't want him to pop out, now, this is where the, the, through here is where the trailer was. Now, I was going to do a Creeps and Monsters on this guy. And, unfortunately, the, I don't, how the fuck does Netflix get all these people to talk? And then I go around and do something indie and no one wants to talk. You know what I mean? It's so irritating. But, like, I went in here, I went to the pallet yard, and they did not want to discuss anything. Um, and, you know, a lot of the guys that work there. Um, creature. Hey, uh, Andrew just texted me, and, uh, I forgot I wanted to go show you guys on Guilford Avenue. See if we can get up there. But right now we're just taking it kind of slow. Um, I, you know, a lot of the guys that work there, um, were working there when he, you know, Methany was their co-worker, so, and I, I don't know how much, uh, he had as far as, like, what his position was there, I think he was more of a guy just put there to watch over the property, um, then, you know, actually working, in the pallet, um, the place where they make pallets. Okay, paper towel wiping your garage. That's nice. This, I just passed a, a caravan and the door was open and the guy had a, uh, I'm sure he's a hooker in there and he was wiping his private parts with a paper towel. Isn't that? funny. This is gross. But yeah, this is a, this area here is a big hooker. A lot of hookers frequent this area here. I don't want to run over one of them, so I'm kind of going slow, because I don't really see anything. Oh, here's somebody. There's is that two women. Oh, this is one lady. So 
so this uh, here heads into um, uh, Moral Park. There's a place up here that, uh, from from this road, you go under the 95 overpass, 95 north and south, and over on the right, it almost looks like there's a road that was underneath the overpass. It could have been, like, for engineers or whatever, but it looks paved, and it looks like an old road. Like, maybe it was once used, and now is no longer used. Um, but we're gonna go, I just wanna, there's, I, I saw that there's a way to drive in there. Um, and I'm not really sure, uh, if it's blocked off or something. I can't see anything. I mean, it is really bad, Alan. fogged up. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Shit. I'm like, it's really foggy, but it's... My windshield is fogged up, I think. Alright, that's better. It's still really foggy, but at least my witch. This place here, this restaurant drive through Italian place, uh, the, it, it, I believe it was a Wendy's at one time. The inside, the dining room in here is unbelievable. It is like this old school 1980s fast food dining room. Trying to find this. It is but the food here is it it's not it's 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 uh it's really meh okay. Oh shit, here it is. Well, we're not getting back there, are we? Look at that. Look at that. It looks like Thriller. Michael Jackson's Thriller. Oh, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. There's some insulation, maybe. I don't know what that is. So, anyway, back in these woods, uh, it's where that little road is. I'm, I'm going to have to walk it. Not tonight in this fog. It's a little creepy, but... I'll walk it and, uh... Just make it a film it video, I guess. I have no idea why this lot is here. Besides, maybe at one time it went through and they got rid of the... Um...
And they got rid of the um, drive, maybe? I don't know. Let me think. Make a left. We're gonna make a left. We're gonna go. Here's little row houses here along this side. I think they're mostly lived in. There's one abandoned one. Oh, I would love to go in one of these where the people live because it's like so old school Baltimore inside. You can just look in and tell. So this back here is a, pretty much an industrial area. You can see these giant uh, bulldozers or cranes or whatever you want to call them. here is so. <coughs> an abandoned um, an abandoned warehouse I swear to god I, that green light looked like it was moving but I guess it was just my imagination You know what's funny? Um, the worst fog I ever saw was when I was doing a, a film it um, session. Not a film it session. A, a, a Saturday a drive. Saturday night drive. Uh, yeah, this back here is all... This is like so creepy back here. It's like you're dropping off a body or something. Where does this go? Oh my god, what are we doing? What am I doing? Okay, it doesn't go anywhere. Oh, there's a little bunny rabbit. There's somebody in the woods here. Uh, they're like in the woods. God damn it, 
that scared the shit out of me. They're right here in the le on the left in the woods in the bushes right there. I don't know what they're doing. Um, but I don't think they're up to any any good. I don't think he wanted me to see him. It probably was maybe a homeless person or something camping back there. But he was just standing there staring at me. Uh, so I was just like, oh, okay. I, at first I saw, I thought it was a shirt. And then I rolled the window down. And then I'm like, oh, God, there is someone literally standing there. <laughs> Why on a night like this? Why? Oh, here's someone here. So that man there, uh, I don't know, man. And maybe it's an employee back here who's, you know, maybe he's getting high or something in the woods on his break. It's hard to say, but I'm not gonna f around with that. I, you know what is uh, crazy? Um, my mother. I was talking to my mom, and she brought this up, and I, I really had not thought about it in a long time. Although I think I did make a video about it like a uh, quiet time maybe I don't I'm, I'm not sure um look at the blue light with the fog wow um but she brought up this time that uh I was at their house and my parents house is in a kind of a wooded it's it's a wooded area um, there's lots of woods behind their house, and, uh, um, they were out of town. I was a teenager. I think I was probably, like, 14, maybe. So that would have been, what, 1991, maybe? Hey, Bill Platt again. Nearly 800, 900 people watching this. I know. You know, I can't, I'm like, why? Why is, why is this so interesting? But um, I'm glad you're here. But thank you, Bill Platt, again. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I'm glad to have everyone here. I hope you're enjoying this drive around Baltimore. Um, so let, let me, let me tell this story. So anyway, uh, my parents were out of town. It was in the, I remember it was fall. My sister wasn't home. Uh, I think she was staying with my aunt, or maybe she was with my parents, it doesn't matter, um, the, the, my parents' backyard is, like, clear, uh, it, there's no, there's trees and stuff, but it's not, like, woods, and then there's a fence, um, and then on the other side of the fence is very dense, uh, forest, and this one night, um, I went outside to smoke a cigarette, as you do when you're 14 years old, and uh, it was late, and I could have sworn I heard people walking around inside the woods. 
just on the other side of the fence. And it really sent a chill up my spine. So I'm like, who the hell, um, you know, is back there? Uh, it just freaked me out. And I went in the house, and in the house I had all the lights on. And I didn't have any, uh, I, I didn't have any, um... Um, sorry, I'm not paying attention. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, so I didn't have any uh, um, curtains closed. So with no outside lights on and all the interior lights on, you could see right. You could see everything I was doing, which was uh, I was masturbating on my mom's panties, her her soiled panties that I found. And no, I'm just kidding. That didn't happen. <laughs> no, I was watching a movie. I remember I was watching. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, the Russ Meyer movie. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> I turned off all the lights inside the house and turned on all the exterior lights. And my dad put these exterior lights on. They're very bright. I mean, they just illuminate the whole... It's crazy. Uh, and I'm sitting in the kitchen uh, at the table, and I'm looking... There's an ambulance over here. I'm looking out, and I see this dirty face in the bushes, right by the fence. All I can see is a face. I don't see... I don't see, like, shoulders or anything. It's just, like, a head, and it's a, with a dirty face on it. And, um... I was uh, quite surprised I don't know what's going on over here um, but also it just it creeped me out so much um, it just did it always it, whenever I think about it I get chills just thinking about it because it was it really was um, incredibly creepy, um, incident, and, uh, <laughs> I know, I, I would love, you know, to find out who that person was, um, and it was three, three o'clock in the morning, or three or four o'clock in the morning, so, you know, it was, it was like, what, what are these people doing out there at this hour, Why is it blocked off over there? It looks like an OD to me. On the left, that convenience store is the, the hottest, most gorgeous Arab man on the face of the planet. I mean, he is absolutely beautiful. His family owns like a bunch of stores. Let's see what's going on over here. I'm just curious.
So th this is uh, Mount Clare over here, Millhill. Um, I wrote a sort of a short story, um, a, something like a script. I really want to make it into something, but it's about um, these two women who go into an abandoned house here, and they fall into the basement, which is filled with water, and they can't get out. They're like trapped in this basement with this water. And there's something underneath the water that's, like, lurking around and touching their legs. And, uh, I always think about that, like, I would love to make that movie, but it would be a short film, but, uh, I think that would be pretty creepy if that happened to anyone. I can't imagine... Because I've seen, you know, I've seen flooded basements around here. And technically, if the stairs are gone, you could get trapped. I mean, there's no doubt. You could absolutely get trapped. Alright, let's come up here. That how creepy that looks. Oh, sorry guys for that noise. I just want to plug my flashlight back in. I lost the indoor charger, so the way I have to charge it now is in the truck, but it's fine. Boy, this is all just people dumped shit back here. This here is a little... Right here on the left, or the right, I mean, this is a little hangout spot to shoot up right there. They got things to sit on. There's probably needles everywhere. That's a little shooting gallery there. I mean, you... Literally, I mean, you just see people shoot up, like, out in the open down here. There's no, uh... People aren't very, uh... Discreet anymore. Okay, we can't make it down there. Those are bricks. Or something. Yeah, Southwest Baltimore is kind of a really bad place. <laughs> My God, I don't know what is going on in that house, but like, it just looks like there's a light on and there's just a pile of junk up to the ceiling.
this is fabulous with this fog. It just it adds so much mood. Mood and atmosphere. Well, I'll tell you, um, this alleyway right here, people have been back here cleaning it up because it was a mess. Now it's, uh, <clears throat> now it looks like it's pretty kept. That, there's a, that little theater there, I don't know what, what that theater is called, but I don't even think it has a church in it. That one right there. Usually churches take these uh, old theaters over. But it's hard to say if you would go in there. Are the seats still there? The projector is always there because it's so heavy they can't. This is kind of a pain to bring it out. Wow, these... Wow. Jesus Christ. Look at all that mess. That right there is a perfect spot to shoot up. Uh, my Urban Exploration, hello, thank you very much. Uh, says, um, as an Aussie, I love seeing your videos. That said, given what you have showed us about Baltimore, I can imagine that city being a good setting for a horror movie. That said, don't stop being you. Thank you urban exploration yeah you know i've always i i mean i've always thought about making i i will eventually make a movie i just don't know right now i need to get to a point there's a certain financial point that i need to be at once i reach that point i will make a movie um I cannot imagine living on this street, how depressing it is. It's so depressing. These are all boarded up. I mean, I guess there's people that still, well, yeah, there's people that live there because, oh God, there's an electric wire. Thank you, Urban Exploration in Australia. I appreciate it. Check out Drew's Adventures and Warner's Adventures. Since you all live in Australia. Look, we're in Cat County. Another place we can go. Uh... Up here um, is where I filmed a video recently. Uh, 
what did I call it? I've come up with so many ridiculous titles that I can't even remember the title that I gave the damn video. Baltimore Horror Story, or... No, that's not it. I can't remember. Uh, Ron, hey, Ron S. <clears throat> Good to see you're doing lives again. I got... Married... Oh, you got married and moved from Florida to to Florida from Colorado. Well, enjoy your time in Florida, and congratulations on your marriage. That is wonderful. Congratulations, Ron S., on his marriage and move to Florida. I've been to Florida in years. I want to go back. Especially looking at this weather. It would be nice to go somewhere tropical. Anyway, I can't remember the name of the video. It was the moment, like, we were going through a field. And ended up at that abandoned <coughs> building in the woods. Um, anyway, that's right up here. We're just going to take a drive back there, but... I was watching something, maybe not on television, but uh, recently, and this place was there, come on dude, you've got all this room, go around, go around, Yeah, there's like a this this place on the right here. We I, I filmed inside of here. It was an old auction house, as far as I know. I don't know what the deal is with all these vehicles sitting out here. There, there's a whole lot of them here too. See that? I don't know if they're being sold off or or what, but. Uh, There's nothing going on in that auction house. It's completely abandoned. Man, that 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 is a creepy old house right there. Let me just show you guys real quick. This is almost like a old kind of maybe even like a farmhouse. I'm about to light this field up. It's right there. See it, what I'm talking about? Oh, never mind. We're not going to be able to see it. You'll see it better without the light. But look at this place. I need, I need to... um. I need to go investigate that place <clears throat> soon. Just walk over there and check it out. That is an old house. That's not... I don't... It's not a row house. And it's been, it's been abandoned for... I mean, probably decades... Let's carry on. Oh, it's got a driveway. There's the driveway right there. But the driveway is shit. I'm not driving down there. But I'll walk it, but not tonight. building here on the on the right uh, 
which is behind us. You can't see it, but that was the one that we did. Yeah, it was just, it was really kind of scary pulling over here. Not fun. This is such a no no man's land over here. It's it's really um God, the car behind me just scared the shit out of me. It's like covered with fucking LED lights. Hold on, you're gonna see it here in a minute. Oh no, it's a. Uh... <laughs> the thing scared the shit out of me. Who are you riding around in that in this weather? I mean, it's a little, it's chilly out, and it's foggy, so it's kind of wet. I don't know if I'd want to be driving that thing around. I mean, it's 50 degrees. It is chilly. I guess if you bundle up, if you bundle up, you'll be okay. So we have to circle the block to do it. And here it is right here. Now, this road is interesting. No big surprise here that someone's been uh, shot here. I guess that's what it is. The holy fucking shit, man. So they, some people opened up the light pole and connected a power strip uh, so they could charge their phones. That's a first. I haven't seen that before. God. There's people out here right now. What the fuck? Is, that is insane. Oh, he's working on his car. Ugh, I would not want to be down here by myself. Like, with my truck up on a jack, changing my tire. You, I couldn't go fast enough. I'd be, I'd want to get the fuck out of here. You see that? That with that spotlight, or the, this, this right here. What, that, that's beautiful. It could be, uh, an album cover. Look at it. Like, just straighten it out a little bit. With the house and the blue light and the, uh... Stop sign. Beautiful. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, let's go up here. See what we're looking at. This is so much... You guys, like, seriously... This is so much fun for me. And I do it anyway. Like, if I weren't live streaming. Like, I do this all the time. I just love driving around Baltimore. And, like, 
really any city, but, like, I like cities with a lot of character, um, and Baltimore definitely has a lot of character, uh, so I really enjoy driving around here, uh, but it's nice to take everybody along with me, you know, it's fun, oh my goodness gracious, this place is open now. The, la the spot bar and lounge. I thought that they were closed. I would love to go there and have a drink. That place is probably so much fun. I love little, like, off-the-beaten-path kind of places. And that's a working man's bar. Uh, with all the, the last time I was there, it had a, uh, a big sign up saying they lost their liquor license. Uh, so I assumed that they were not going to be open again, but apparently they... I guess they got everything sorted out with the liquor boy. But yeah, I love doing this. And I, oh, you know what? Guys, this this thing here, Arlong. Arlong is like all over the city. Like it is literally. A tag that is all... You see it everywhere. And it, it's in all different kind of... Places. And it's... It's never the same. It's always different kind of tag or whatever. Um, the, the Baltimore Banner just did a whole story on... On... Um, trying to figure out who Arlong is. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, ideas who it may be, but none of them have ever like panned out, or can't they can't be proven. But if you get a moment, go read about it if you're interested. It's it's actually a really cool story. I'd love to know who Arlong is. Arlong, if you're out there, send me an email. I want to know. Your secret is safe with me. Oh, I'm on Route 40. Okay. I need food. I haven't eaten today. I had some cheese and uh, a couple of crackers. That was about it. It's been, you know what? Uh, one of the things I want to say is, for the last hour, I have just been a tour guide, and it is quite a nice feeling, a much more positive thing than, than you know, discussing negative things. So that's what I'm going to do on this stream. I, I just, I just need to leave it all, like, just 2024, just leave it all behind. 
this month has been rough. I mean, I'm just, I'm just starting to get back to work now because my truck was fucked up. I was fucked up with COVID. Um, everything bad that could happen happened. So it really slowed everything down. But, um, this has been a lot of fun. I haven't, I mean, I really haven't done this. I don't even remember the last time I did one of these. Um, but it's awesome to be back and, and doing this, taking you guys around. Okay, fuck the food. We're going to go to Lincoln Park. Actually, I know where I can eat. Let's... I was looking for news articles, anything new happened in Leakin Park. Um, I think the police have, like, a monopoly on this place. I don't think they ever really, um... Hey, Punch Gut, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Um, cause I think a lot of stuff happens here where they, it doesn't really get into the press. Um, so, are you telling me to go? Thank you, uh... I mean, I know that that is, like, a thing. I know that they... I, I just don't think the press, like, reports on it. Oh, my God. Um, anymore, because it's just... I think it's just become saturated, maybe. Say whatever you want. This place still still works to give you the creeps. Let's go and check out Winterborn because we have somebody behind us who's driving really fast. Oh, and of course they're turning too, so that's great. So Winterborn Avenue is, uh, it's really one of the last remaining kind of interior roads. They, they shut down 
all of the roads so it would uh so people wouldn't go back and dump bodies um and Winterbourne's really one of the last roads through here that uh you can still, that person in that car is so annoying. Heather Ray, hey! Not even there, and she has chills. That must be fun. So let's. Uh, Brandon Johnson. Whoops. I gotta keep my window cracked. Otherwise. windows there's like they get so fogged up you can't see anything but I'm glad you all came tonight and it shows you're still interested and that means that I will probably be doing more of these but it's lovely having everybody here together Another thing I'm also going to do is, um, you know, do some traveling to different kind of lo cities or locations that we can do this into. I just started to do that, and I think we went to a couple. Atlantic City and... Did we go to New York City? I can't remember, but anyway... Uh, here is the road. Jesus, that scared them. Why did that look like it was, like, moving? There's, there's, uh, Passed, like a deer was like two feet from the window of the car.
I just, I cannot believe how much trash people dump through here. It's, it's just unreal. There's trash everywhere. I mean, shit. This little, this little valley here looks like a damn landfill. I keep forgetting that the light is, we cannot use the light tonight because of the fog. But yeah. Uh, all the horrible things that have happened in this park. Just a hundred feet away, a guy blew his head off. And I'm the fortunate one to find the uh, some of the bones from it. That was fun. Poor bastard. Where is the thing? Here it is. Sorry, I'm just trying to plug in my... There we go. I want this thing charged up. What time are we looking at? Oh, it's after midnight. I'm gonna start driving here. Hey, uh, uh, Urban Exploration again. Yeah, Dan Bell finds a body. That's all I need. I have always, you know, I have always feared I've always kind of feared that, like, you know, being something that could happen. I mean, obviously in Baltimore there's a lot of even if it's just somebody who OD'd in one of those houses you know, if I go through one of those houses and it's an OD uh, you know Seeing a dead person is not exactly something you forget. Um, especially if they're like, you know, in an abandoned building or laying in the grass. Um, I remember... Uh, They fixed the road in front of my parents' house. Well, there used to be a curve there, right in front of their house. It was really hard to get out of the driveway. Um, but there were always auto accidents in front of their house. And I just remember this woman one time was, like, laying in the yard. And she was, like, bleeding out. And um, she was, like, screaming and... Oh, it was awful. My mother just grabbed us and said, go in the house. And, uh, they, my parents always run down and try to help, but it was mostly, the, the accidents were always severe because people would go really fast and there was no sign that there was a curve in the road. And uh, they would hit that curve and go right into the woods, into a tree. And there's one tree in particular that's still there that has all these scars on it from cars smashing into it. Um, but several deaths, for sure. And I told my mother, we were talking about that, uh, that incident where... Um, my mom used to go to work at 4 o'clock in the morning. She would work the 4 to 12 shift. And she um, used to take us around 3 a.m. We would She'd wake us up and then drive us up to my grandmother's house 
which was like 10 minutes away. Um, this one night, we went outside. It was a cold night, and there was this man standing at the end of the driveway under the streetlight, and he was just standing there, just staring at us. And my mother was, like, near tears. She was just, like, dragging us and throwing us in the car. She was absolutely terrified. She locked the doors, got the car started, and I remember we we turned around and drove down the driveway towards him, and he didn't move, and you couldn't see his face or anything. And uh, my mom started carrying a gun after that. My dad gave her a, I think a thirty-eight maybe, and she started carrying a gun. I don't blame her. Um. Back then, that area was much more rural, so there, it wasn't, you know, the, to see someone at 3 o'clock in the morning hanging out in front of, you know, someone's house at their driveway, but I told my mom recently, I was like, I was like, what if it was a ghost? Like, what if the, you know, one of the people that died uh, was, you know, made a, made a appearance at the end of the driveway. Don't know, but that was a creepy a creepy incident. Right up here on the, on the right is where they found the Woodlawn High School student, uh, Heyman Lee, from the Serial Podcast. Uh, they found her, actually, she was where these cement barriers are. If you head 40 feet back in the woods there, there's a log. Uh, and they, it's so weird how she was found. Um, A guy pulled off... She was missing for a month. And a guy pulled off the road to take a leak. And... He... uh, Walked all the way back there. I don't know why he would go so far back into the forest. Um, And he was taking a leak and he looked out and saw... A hand poking out of the the dirt of the forest floor and oh my god what the hell was that did you guys see that what the fuck was that It looked like someone standing on the little hill here, and they threw something at the car. It had to be someone standing there, because I saw a light. Like a cell phone light. Maybe not. I'm not going back. What's the point? They're just going to be hiding anyway. It's probably some stupid kid. Um... Anyway, um, so the guy, they, they, uh, she'd been missing for a month, and then he went back to take a leak, and they even questioned if he had done it, uh, but her boyfriend, Adnan Saeed, uh, he's been in jail, then he was released, and I think now he's back in jail again, uh, I think now that they're saying that he, they're not gonna give him any more, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. It's just such a confusing case. It just goes on and on and on. Um, but they're saying that he... You, you just 
go read about it. I don't feel like discussing it. I've talked about Serial, that show, enough. That was the most popular... Serial was the most popular um, podcast. At, I think at that time it was popular, but I think now it's been buried with podcasts that are much more popular. But at that time, it's sort of the infancy of podcasts, so people were... I just don't like the show. I find it boring. I mean, call me crazy, but I just found it really boring. I found it much more interesting to read about it than... This place. Here, they're always hanging out here at this place. I'm just headed this way so I can stop at the grocery store and get some food before I head back. I keep thinking Mama's in here, but she's not. I didn't bring her. She, uh... I gotta get something to keep her in the back seat because I don't want her to stand on this on this center, um, thing. Because if I have to break, I don't, she's gonna, like, fly into the damn, uh, dashboard. We can't have... (coughs) Can I have a broken mama? We cannot. Oh, Andrew. Andrew, I'm not going to... But we ran out of time. Uh, but I'll definitely do it next week. Sorry, Andrew. Which way am I going? I'm going to go this way. Oh, Andrew, I'm... My apologies. I just... I'm, like, at this point, I'm, like, so... hungry that I'm going to kill somebody. (laughs) I would just... You know what I really want right now? A big bowl of vegetable soup. A salad... And, like, a big piece of baguette. That would be ideal. This is a very, very creepy night, full of ghosts, goblins. I would, you know, I need to start, like, when there's, like, a man in the woods, I gotta, I I need to start lighting them up and showing you guys. It just feels so rude and exploitive, especially if it's somebody who's down on their luck. I don't want to fuck with that. Someone's throat hurts. Heather Ray, your throat hurts. 
Well, you know, soup, honey. Soup. Supa. Oh, I'd love to have some of that Mexican chicken soup with the tortilla. Oh, man. No, you know who I love on on YouTube? Uh, Chef, what is his name? Sully, Chef. Chef Sui? I think his name is Chef Sui. And he's a Mexican kid who makes like traditional Mexican dishes. And he makes them, and they're, <clears throat> like, I will sit there and watch that kid make food, and he, when he takes a bite, and I'm like, oh, it just looks so good. Um, but I think his name is Chef Sui. He make, and then he makes food, like, he's not wearing a shirt. I don't know why he's <laughs> makes videos or he's shirtless and making Mexican food, but... Whatever, I, I am there for the food. <sighs> oh, excuse me. Celeste likes him too. Yeah, he's he's cool, man. Oh, that's how he gets his views? Well, why is that? The food is the bait. The food is what counts, man. He makes a good food. I want to, I mean, I would hire him to do like a cookout. Do you know what I mean? Like if I were having a cookout, hire him to make all the food. I mean, he, the, you know, the, from drinks to apps to everything, dessert, so great. Um, anyway, you guys, I really appreciate you. This is danbell.com. Get a print. They're uh, 25 bucks for an 8x10, or you can get an 11x14 for a little bit more. And I hand make all of them, and I send them out myself, so I don't have any help. Nobody is helping me make the things. I do it all on my own. They are handmade prints on prof professional, everything professional. The paper, the ink, the machine, everything is like top of the line. And also, patreon.com slash this is Dan Bell. So many exclusives and videos that are not on YouTube and uh, my two underground crappy movies. And uh, there's a bunch of, there's hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of things on there to, to check out. Um, and it's five bucks a month, so you can't. You can't beat that. Um, so anyway, uh, just let me know in the comments if you want me to do more of these. Um, if you do, well, you know what? I don't really care because I'm going to do them anyway. I'm having fun. Like, this is fun for me. Um, I love driving around, especially, oh, man, I hope we get a snowstorm. Next snowstorm in Maryland, my ass is out. I'll be live streaming from the streets. I want to get this damn truck. I want to get it out and go drive around in the snowstorm. That's my my goal. Is to do that. Anyway, you guys. I love you guys. Have a fabulous night. Thank you so much for being here. 
See, we took all the negative and we crumpled it up and threw it away. And everything now, from here on out, positivity, positivity. And if you're not going to be positive in this room, you will be banned by one of my amazing mods. And thank you to my mods, seriously. Apocalypse Jen, Destiny Glenn, um, Lisa. There's so many of you. So thank you so much. Talk to you all soon. Have a wonderful night. Goodbye. Thank you.